Welcome back to Synthetic Biology 1. Today, we're doing heat shock transformation of E. coli. Uh, it's been about 10 minutes. These uh, cells have thawed, and they are now ready to use. So, First, I will need to take an aliquot of these cells. So I've got about 200 microliters of cells here total, uh, but I only need 20 to do my transformation. So I will take my aliquot here. Don't forget to label. Okay, I'll put that uh, on ice, let that cool for a couple of minutes, and then I'm going to aliquot 20 microliters of competent cells into that tube. So we're keeping everything cold for this. Okay, so there's my 20 microliters of cells. To this, I am going to add just a half a microliter of the plasmid that I want to transform. So in this case, we're transforming an intact plasmid at a very high concentration. So I only need to add a tiny, tiny amount to the cells for a successful transformation. If I was working with uh, like a ligation product, for example, I would use a larger volume, maybe two or three microliters uh, to get to get the number of transformants that we need. But we for this, we, we just need a just a whisper, a whisper of cells. So we'll go all the way down to half a microliter. Add that to our competent cells very gently. So you'll notice that I'm pipetting the plasmid directly into the cells, right? So when, you, when you're working with a volume that small, you really can't afford to lose anything. So you pipette directly on top of the cells. Okay, now I'll mix this by flicking. So I give it just a little, a little flicking motion and then tap it down. Now you want to leave that for uh, mm, five minutes, ten minutes, uh, just to, to let the give the plasmid a chance to stick to the cells. Uh, I don't really know why, but uh, people say it in improves the transformation efficiency. Uh, okay, so we're back. It's been ten minutes. Uh, these cells uh, are well mixed now, and they are ready to administer the heat shock. So for the heat shock part of the heat shock transformation, uh, I'll be using this heating block. Uh, you might not use a heat shock, you might use a water bath uh, or some other way of raising the temperature to 42 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna do it for exactly uh, 30 seconds. So I don't, uh, I don't have a timer handy around here, so I'm just gonna time it on my iPhone. <laughs> Okay, so, boom, 30 seconds on the heat block. All right, that's 30 seconds. Now we take it out, go immediately back to the ice, and we'll leave it two minutes on the ice to recover. So while the cells are recovering, we can uh, prepare the media that we'll use for the next step of the protocol. So uh, I'm gonna recover these cells in 
uh, plain LB media. So this is, this is just standard E. coli LB media. Uh, other transformation protocols use enriched media, like you might see of SOC, for example. And in some cases, uh, a richer media can improve the recovery of the cells, improve the transformation efficiency. Um, but I find that plain old LB works, uh, works perfectly well for most applications. So that's what we're going to be using. OK, so that's two minutes on ice. Now we'll take the cells out and add 200 microliters of plain LB. So this is a, a 10 to 1 ratio. We're using 200 microliters of LB to recover 20 microliters of competent cells. Okay. So again, we'll mix that a little bit by flicking it. And now we want to recover these cells at 37 degrees C uh, for 15 minutes to an hour, depending on the plasmid that you're uh, transforming and the antibiotic resistance that you're using. So the, the purpose of the recovery step is uh, that it gives the cells a chance to grow, a, a chance to recover from the calcium chloride treatment, and to express the antibiotic resistance marker that's contained in the plasmid. OK, so we want to grow the cells at 37 degrees C for half an hour. Um, with shaking uh, to create the optimal conditions for cell growth. So there are quite a few ways uh, that you can do that. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you my way. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to incubate these cells in, the, in a regular incubator uh, using what I call the sandwich method. So I'll take another, another rack like this one. tape the two racks together to make a kind of sandwich. So now the, uh, now the tube is, is horizontal, and so this gives the cells uh, a lot of room to shake around when they go on the shaking incubator. I don't know. It works for me. Okay, so we're back. The cells are all recovered. The sandwich worked. In this case, we were, uh, we're using a chloramphenicol resistant plasmid, so we recovered the cells for a full 60 minutes in the incubator. Okay. So these cells are recovered and ready to use, and all that's left is to plate them. So over here, I've got some plates of LB agar with the appropriate antibiotic, in this case, chloramphenicol. Um, and uh, I'm going to prepare two plates, one with 200 microliters of cells and one with 20 microliters of cells. So th the reason that I like to prepare two plates is um, I don't know exactly what the transformation efficiency of this plasmid is going to be, and this improves the odds that I'm going to get uh, exactly one plate with the, the right number of colonies. Okay, so uh, to plate these cells, I'm going to use these. So these are uh, glass beads that I'll add to the plates, uh, and they have the effect of spreading the media evenly uh, around the plates without absorbing uh, too many bacteria, and so they're going to they're give us a nice even distribution of bacteria on the surface of the plates. Okay, so... Plate number one gets 200 microliters. And plate number two gets 20 microliters. Shake them, turn, turn, and turn. Okay, that's going to give us a beautifully even distribution of bacteria on our plates. 
toss the beads. And that's it. These are ready to go in the incubator overnight. So here I have an example plate that I prepared yesterday. And uh, as you can see, this is after about 16 hours of growth. I have these nice, beautifully formed uh, colonies of transformed bacteria using the heat shock transformation protocol. Thank <laughs> you.